Hello, hello friends. How are you? How are you? <laughs> um, so, today is a very, very special day. And um, it is, uh, it's quite surreal. Um, today is the 50th birthday of my son. I have two children. Um, my son uh, is born when I was 17 and uh, my daughter when I was 20. So today it's a uh, 50th birthday of my son. He's celebrating this in Corsica. And uh, it's really, like I said, it's quite surreal. It's um, it's like I wonder where time passed. Uh, in the same time, it seems long, 50 years, but in the same time, it seems like it has been so fast. And, and it's really, uh, really amazing because uh, maybe some of you know my story because I spoke about that when I was uh, pregnant of my son, I was at school and I hide my pregnancy for five months to be sure as I was minor that my father will not make me do an abortion because I thought he could do that because I had some of my friends who had to face this. The parents made them do an abortion so I didn't want that at all. It was um, not easy to face. Uh, I had no fear um i have no shame <laughs> as well and uh but i could feel what people were thinking but i didn't care because what i wanted it was stronger stronger than what uh, the judgment of people or or the fear i could eventually have to face my parents so they knew uh, only when I was five months uh, pregnant and uh, because I was already very well trained at home to take care of the of the things of the family I am the oldest and I was uh, I was very young when I was taking care of paying the rent filling the paper for social security uh, sewing to help my mother working in summertime so cooking <laughs> i know this since i'm very young because when i was very very young i was living sometimes with one of my grandmother was um, losing her mind so she i was coming back at lunchtime uh, from school and she was not knowing where i was i was eight years old so I was going downstairs, it was in, in the city in Besançon at that time, and buying some food and cooking for both of us. So I've been trained very early to do this, you know, task that are done in family. So for me to have children young was not complicated. I took care of my younger brother and sister, of my baby sister, who is 15 years younger than me. So they have two years difference, almost same day, uh, same time in August. And, uh, and I took care of my sister when she was baby because my mother was in hospital when she was, my sister was six months. So for me, uh, because I also took care of my mother when she was pregnant of my sister, it was a very difficult pregnancy. So I was helping and, uh, and I, I was like, uh, it was like something natural to me. And especially what was the most amazing is to, uh, to think and feel that life was growing inside of my body. This was something fantastic. When I was little, little, and uh, I was eating, for example, mandarin or oranges, and it was uh, seed. I imagine that if I was swallowing them, 
a tree was growing to grow inside of me. And I found this magical. At that time, I was like a little girl. I didn't know even how, where the baby were coming. But for me, it was, we eat a seed of fruits and it's growing inside of us. So I was not too far in a way. So for me, the life uh, process, uh, growing process of in nature really amazed me because I've been, uh, I've been shown to, by my grandfather and grandmother in Corsica, especially my grandfather because he was taking care of the garden. I've been shown about how the little seeds are blooming and growing and what they give and after how we harvest the fruits and vegetables, what I was doing with them. So this was really fascinating to me. And when I knew, I knew I was pregnant before doing the test. I knew it inside of me very, I think the moment I've been pregnant, I almost knew. And I knew it was a boy. I really, it was really, a certitude to me, it was no doubt possible. So I made the test, pregnancy test, maybe one week after I knew inside, and it was a validation of what I felt. So this was also quite a good training and a memory I kept about what comes in my in my mind, I can say, the the feeling I have and, and is right. So this, in fact, helped me to trust this intuitive process of things that are like a message coming inside of me. And uh, after it was a validation with the test. So I was, uh, I was at school I was coming only each two weeks at home and I told nobody and I told only uh, my aunt, the one who passed away some months ago. She was my, my godmother. So I called her from Corsica and I told her I was pregnant. And, but I never told my mother and father. So um, I knew it was the right thing for me to do. It created a very strong relationship inside of my body with this life growing. And paradoxically, uh, I never been, for both of my children, I never been a, a mother, a chicken mother, I would say, or we say also Jewish mother. I'm, I'm not at all like that. But maybe, I guess maybe for my daughter, it has been like a little bit confusing because maybe she felt I was not uh, really loving her. She has another personality than my son. And, uh, but it's not that because for me, be having, bringing a, a human being to life that life doesn't belong to me. It's not my possession. And this has been very clear since very young. And uh, for me, I bring life, I help a human being to come to this life. And it's an individual. It has its own individuality. It's not part of me. Maybe it's for that that my delivery was not difficult because I was not holding. It was not my possession. And, and this is what I say to, to people when you have something, mostly illness in your body, don't make it your possession. Speak about that thing like something foreign outside of you. It's not my, my, my. When I hear people, I have my that, my that. It's going to stay yours. So it's very difficult to, to explain that. And when I was younger, I was unable to, I was not even aware of that. But it was this feeling of letting the other be free to don't 
uh, and it was it's not easy when you are parent because you have to put some frames and the frames are not often very welcome by the children so it, it's not an easy position when being parent so i was very young i was already used to take care of a family and uh, it has not been a weight for me but it was also to take the children for a weekend or something like that after i changed i had my best friend we raised our babies together when my my daughter is born and i moved on another place in the suburb of paris and i met my friend who's still my friend and we raised our babies together so this helped me i could let her the children one day and do some shopping or something i had to do and i was doing the same for her but it has been only when my kids were eight and ten years old that for the first time i've been able to be two weeks without them they've been in uh, in um, snow vacation and uh, it was the first time since they born <laughs> it was like really a relief but in the same time the funny thing is that i had two weeks ahead for me alone and i became sick i had the flu <laughs> so i had i guess to burn some toxins and and mostly i had to rest because it was a time when i was you know in my 30th years i was really dynamic 28 30 i was really uh, very active never taking rest so i think i, I needed rest and uh, it's what happened so what is interesting is that having this kind of way to be with um, these children with these human beings not being my possession not being i and i i have not uh, for me it's clear that i did not have children for taking care of myself when i will be older and this has been very clear since very young so it's for that i always took care uh, carefully of myself because i don't want to be a weight for them and uh, is what I always say to people, if you take care of yourself, there are less um, chances, if I can say, that you can be a weight in your older age to your children and your family around. So this is one of the reasons it's very important to take care of, um, of yourself properly. Um, and to be with yourself because more you are in silence with yourself more you're gonna get informations from your higher self messages uh, directions and more you listen to that more they become present and more you are guided in a easier softest way it was not like that at the beginning beginning of my you know of my life it was a little bit tormented because imagine you just you are just 17 and you are 20 and you have already two children and uh, it's not easy and it's it was not easy but in the same time it was not for me complicated to do what i had to do so for me i never thought it never crossed my mind that my children would take care of me when I will be old. Never. And I always said I will work until the end. And I love it. My work is various different activities and I love each of them. And I notice when sometimes I'm a little bit tired of something I'm doing, like by chance it stopped, but it's the universe who is sending that. It's my higher self. And if I start to be bored of something I'm doing that I'm not enjoying anymore or passionate anymore, I know, I knew through ages that it's because it's the end of a cycle. It's the end of a time of experimentation that I had and that I'm going to go to, toward another one. So it's quite an interesting process. And when you notice that very young, you go through 
these ages more peacefully because you know it's a process because you know that you notice oh i was fed up of doing that and it stops yes for sure <laughs> it's it works like that <laughs> because in the other way it's because you had uh, the benefits even if you don't notice it of the experience you were having and it was no need to be more in this kind of experience so you started to it goes the other way is the higher self you had the experience at the soul level and the higher self is already going on something else but you on the physical body it's lower vibration it's longer between spirit at the speed light and more fast and the body that is a very lower vibration it needs a time of adaptation of transition of transformation so sometimes this time we can be confused because we don't understand why what we like so much we don't like it anymore and we sometimes we can feel guilty we can say yeah i'm not consistent i am like what what is going on why i cannot focus on that it's simply because you had the experience and you have to go on another one so when i noticed that quite very young when uh, I, I'm, I'm like okay so what's going to be next so i cannot say that sometimes it cannot be a little bit hmm, concerning because uh, it's the unknown but when you know it's a process you know that there is a transition and it will be something new coming in your life and uh, and i notice as well that it has always been better and better and better because i was not grasping the old experience I, I, I did not hold, I let it go, the old experience, I, without regrets, without judgment, without feeling guilty, without feeling ashamed, without fear. I, I let it go because I knew it's a process. So what is going on when it's like that, something is flowing in an easier way and it's softer and it brings more and more peace because there are not underlining fears of being suspended without knowing what is what's going to be next because when you are in the present moment with this um, i could say knowledge about this process you don't interfere with what the higher self already know next, but you don't. So you're going to start to have some glimpse or something that attracts you outside of you, messages, situations, things. And these little, sometimes I know this it's like exciting to don't know what's going to be next and often i've been very 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 surprised because what came next was something that maybe a long time ago was thinking about that i would love to experiment to live and i forgot about it and the next was coming <laughs> and it was like yeah it's it's a it's a very simple and uh, and natural process only our resistances and uh, our need to grasp on thing because we are afraid to don't have or for any kind of reason there are fears uh, makes the process more difficult and uh, painful so i wanted to tell you all this today because 50 years after my baby was born here I am almost 70 years 
I'm 67 and a half. I will be 68 in December. And uh, in the last two years, three years, four years, I can say since yeah, 2018, so many things changed in my life and things totally unexpected. And the most unexpected thing came by my son, who is nine, now 50 years old. And this is like something that is, yes, I was right to don't do an abortion. Yes, I was right to, to go what I felt with that. Even despite situation where you are 16 and a half, and you are pregnant and you are at school, it's not easy to live. But you have to be really, um, how I could say, it's, you have to be already trusting life. And I trusted life because when I was very, because I have a good memory and I have a good visual memory and maybe photography came in my life because of this visual memory and also because my you know need in a way to share with others what i love what what i found beautiful so photography came from that and i found it magical but the memory that i had very young very very young when i was around three four years old and this really show all my life that everything will be okay. It's when I was in Corsica, on that beach, on the, at the river, with the rocks, climbing on rocks, the trees, and scratching my skin, looking at my skin, bleeding, and like a couple of days after it was healed. And I was like, how this is possible? It's fantastic. I was amazed by the process. So for me, when I've been pregnant, I knew that billion of women gave birth before me and I will do it like all the women. I was not at all scared about that. I knew it will be painful, but I said, okay, if I survived, I will survive as well, you know? And, um, and it has been an amazing experience. It has been a transcendental experience for me to go with the pain, to don't resist, and to the point that it's like not feeling the pain anymore because you go on another level of consciousness and it's really, really, really fantastic. So my strong desire to don't uh, get an abortion when I was not even 17, 16 and a half. Now it makes sense. <laughs> now it's like, wow, who would tell me then, especially my son had a life not very easy before, uh, before like the last 10 years, it's is really, his life is totally changing as well. And, and in fact, uh, now I have opportunities that are given to me, brought to me without, I was expecting, without expecting anything. I never expected anything and uh, from my children to bring me, you know, like I said, to take care of myself when I will be older. But now it's by this, <laughs> this son that I have opportunities to go on new experiences towards the end of my life. It's, it's quite, it's fabulous. And uh, I'm really grateful to myself to have been like stubborn with what was right for me, despite the situation, despite the condition, despite uh, the judgment of people, despite all that. This, what was inside of me was stronger than anything and nothing could not me, me do, could me, make me do things that I didn't want to do. I've always been like that, but uh, 
it's uh, it's quite very interesting that I can see 50 years later where I am now, where my son is, and uh, and where and what opportunities I brought to me totally uh, in an unexpected way to change completely my life again, like I did when I was in my early 40s. I changed countries twice. And uh, I came here when I was 44. And, uh, and now I'm ready to go on something else. And it's quite, it's, a fasc it's fascinating because I don't know. <laughs> I, it's like uh, there are so many projects. I don't know the shape that this is going to take. And I'm, I'm really excited about what, what I will, I'm doing now, by what I am uh, involved in now. Um, this building, this renovation of houses, this, this all this project of um, realizing um, beautiful spaces and uh, things that I love to do. And now I can bring this to another level. It's like, you know, it's like it's by layers. It's like more you go deep inside or in, in yourself, you are in that silence and you are with yourself. People told me, you are not scared there. I could not live alone. You are not bored. You are no way. I am so well here. I really enjoy to be with my, myself. I'm never alone. I'm never alone. I am with my higher self and uh, it's wonderful. And I, I never get bored. I see beauty all around me. I, I follow the guidance who brought me here in a very strange way. I spoke about that when I moved here last year. And uh, it was really like a little bit chaotic. <laughs> but um, I follow, I continue. I, I, I had no apprehension, no fears, and I still don't. I am happy to be here, to don't to be, I can stay days uh, alone without seeing anyone. And I love it. Um, I could not see myself living differently. And uh, it's wonderful because you live at your own rhythm. You, you see, it's really interesting. Because even some years ago, I had quite some pain in my body and I'm aging and I don't have pain in my body. And I don't have pain in my body because of the maintenance in so many, 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 many years since I can say ever. And uh, because also my way to think uh, change as well for the best, I think. <laughs> it made I made my life more simple. Um, I don't have a lot of burden. I have a lot of things, but things that I love, and uh, I think I'm human, and I live my incarnation, and I have this object that I love around me. Um, sometimes I would love to don't have anything. But it's like each piece that I collect and I, I found are little treasures, mostly found in, uh, in thrift stores. And it's like giving life again and seeing beauty uh, and putting these pieces together. And it's like the feeling they're happy to have a new life. And in fact, it's a little bit like uh, doing what I do with myself, taking all this, you know, part of me or time of me and making something different out of it. And it's wonderful. And now I'm like, wow, it's, uh, who would tell? 
Who would tell that? Who would tell at that time? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's fabulous, really, really. It's for that, um, it's very difficult to, you know, some people ask me my opinion about abortion. I cannot speak about that. I can speak only about my experience. And I give you my the testimony of my experience. Um, and I don't say that it has to be like that. But for me, it was a certitude that I will not do it, even if I was not in the optimum situation to be pregnant. Um, I had to face, uh, I had challenges, emotion, emotional challenges, challenge very strong, very hard to deal with, especially with my parents when they knew, but I have absolutely no regrets. I, I would do again the same thing. And, uh, and after I, we quit with my husband, the father of my children, Corsica, uh, for the suburb of Paris. And, uh, and before that, I, we had no home. And I was at my aunt, the one who passed away, for some months. Uh, it was Easter time. It was uh, end of winter, just until end of spring. And the time my husband found an apartment in the suburb of Paris where he was going to work, I stay at my aunt place and uh, with my little uh, baby son. And um, my daughter has been conceived there on Easter time and she born at Christmas. And this path is also a beautiful path. And I, couldn't, I can never uh, not remember her birthday because we have our birthday almost the same day. And for me, it was my, my divine child coming to life. It's fantastic, really. It has not been, it has been a totally different experience with that pregnancy. It was not easy. I had a little baby boy that I was breastfeeding at the beginning. And after I had, uh, I was very, very sick. I had an hepatitis and uh, to an extreme point that I was totally, my liver was really in bad condition. And after I became pregnant, it was very hard. It was a very hard time. We had, I had no home. Uh, but then, even that never came to me, the idea of make an abortion, even in this very difficult uh, situation with a little baby and being pregnant and no home. And it was quite difficult, but I never thought about doing that. Uh, even if I could think it was not the optimum time because I was so tired, really, really tired, really down. But, you know, it's, uh, it's wonderful. <laughs> I have absolutely no regrets for that as well. And, uh, and both my kids uh, had life not really easy. And I believe we choose our parents. And... Maybe they choose me because they knew that I will be strong enough to don't be totally devastated by the um, challenges they went through, very hard things, especially my daughter, very, very difficult, terrible accident. So, you know, it's, uh, it's not easy to be parent. It's wonderful to be grandparent. <laughs> now I have granddaughters. And when I see this beautiful young woman, it's, it amazes me. And if I was doing an abortion when I was 16 and a half, my granddaughters will not be here. And uh, it's... 
it's for that we are at cause we are at cause beyond our imagination because for me it's more and more evident that our invisible being knows and choose exactly the situation to experiment to live because it's a path that it's needed for the evolution and we have the choice and this is right and this is good <laughs> there are bunnies there they are so cute and and this is really uh, it's important you have to do what you feel is important for you in your heart don't listen people around they're gonna say oh you are too young for that uh, uh, you are too young to get married or it's not their experience it's the experience that you may have to go through it's your experience anything and they say oh you are crazy you're gonna do this or you go there or it's dangerous or that if you feel that it's right for you and you feel because more you connect you are connected to to you to your wholeness to your truth more you know exactly what you have to do when you have to do it and sometimes there are times where you don't know so the best thing to do is to let settle is to let just like i said always i gave this example many times give three days with you start to to pause consciously that this thing that bother you or that you question you or that you don't know what to do you take it like you put it in a bag you take it outside of you you take it in a we put it in a bag and you say i give you i let you out of me for three days and often things gonna come information signs someone gonna be in touch with you or you're gonna read a book and something gonna make wow yeah and that gonna do, that doesn't seem to be related but suddenly it's like pieces of a puzzle and you're gonna see a bigger picture and after a while especially with time it's for that it's nice to take age to to go in age especially with time you will see that everything was perfectly in the right order at the right time so it's uh it's it's quite really fascinating so i wanted to share this with you and uh, i like to celebrate at distance this birthday that i'm not at the big party that my son was so happy and he's so happy to share with his friend and and all the people he knows and i see how much is appreciated and um, he was all, also like that when he was a little boy on the beach he was all the little children little little were uh, going toward him and michel michel calling him and wanting to be old by him in his arm and 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 he had and this this kind of um, kindness inside that is attractive to people and he has been a little bit victim of that but it's his path you know so i wanted to share this with you i wanted also to tell you that um it's very emotional for me today i wanted to tell you that uh, i'm not uh, so i'm not celebrating in corsica with my son but i'm going to be with him one month in thailand from uh, middle mostly middle of october uh, september to end of october one month and a little bit more and uh, i will not be able uh, to ship any shawls so if you have you know gift that you have to want to do for birthday or people you like eventually think to order in advance i can ship until middle of september if things are available things you like are available and uh, after i will be back for end of october for christmas time so i wanted to tell you that as well um and um, voila <laughs> so 
thank you very much for following and for listening to my stories. Maybe it can give you some other options in what you are living on what is coming on your path. And um, don't forget that we decided to come at that time, at this time, to live the experience in, that, in the era we are. So trust that process. Send good, good, uh, I, want, I don't want to say energy, but send good things from your heart for the collective. Don't, don't ignore the nasty things that are outside. They're going to come. I, I said that three years ago. It's going to be more and more and worse and worse. And it's not finished. It's not ended. It's going to be really, really serious. But observe that. Don't be under the emotional stress of these things. No, never forget that everything is temporary. Nothing lasts forever. So be present to what is coming and uh, be alert. Be open to things that are coming to you. For that, silence is very important. Don't uh, try to don't be too much absorbed by the exterior and by, uh, you know, um, TV, news and all these things uh, or even by social media. But observe, don't be ignorant about what is going on. It's important to be to know, to be alert about what is going on. And but don't be under the fear of what could eventually happen. This is what is important. Don't create a dark scenario. Don't create that in your mind, because if you create that in your mind, at one level, this your mind, it's at the invisible level. Everything that is around us, if we are a lot to create something uh, not really nice in our mind, there are chances that this thing become uh, manifesting uh, in the physical realm. So it's nice to see the nasty thing, to don't be under the emotional stress of this, to be really firm regarding this thing for what is right for you, and to send this with love, and and just to be on that. To, it's like a, it's like a metamorphose, like in martial art. You see something, a news, that it be on the news, on TV, that are not really the one who you have to follow because we know what it is, or this post that you can see. Take that, observe it, and try to find what could be, if you take this, as what, what could be when you reverse that? And do this every time you have one of these posts, it's like in martial art. You take the energy that is given to you in a certain way, like an attack, so it can be like very violent. You take it, and these news are violent. You take it, you observe, you take distance, and you imagine what could be, how could this could be reversed, and how you can give a message, maybe in sending it. When I, when I post things, it's not because I believe it's true, it's that. It's because I, I want that you question yourself about these things, that you stimulate that way to process this and to metamorphose this, to shift that on something positive. If we all do this, it's going to affect the collective because we're going to create an egregore where we are not ignorant about what is going on. We are not naive, ignorant or blind or like denying. We know, we see it's a possibility. It's possible that it's not 
true, never, we know it, but we want to make something beautiful out of that. How can we do this? Uh, it's it's an art, you know, it's a, it's a martial art. So we have this uh, creator power inside each of us. Nobody is more spiritual than someone else. We are all spiritual beings, but we express this spirituality differently and uh, spirituality differently. So don't feel that your voice or your truth is not worth it. It's important because mine plus yours plus yours plus yours all together wanting good, we create good. And and I really I really think like this. And I, I have the feeling I always thought like that because I remember as far as as I was at the beginning with my kids uh, and I was speaking with people around in my family and all and in my family they were always saying oh she always want to heal everyone so you see it's that it's how can you bring something that brings good even if it's something you don't say or formulate but something you think it's there uh, and I don't want to speak about positive thinking it's not that it just may be yeah it can be called like that but sometimes it's a little bit too schematized it's for me it's more to create beauty out of something that is ugly how can we do that how can we do that beauty is direct expression of the divine it's connected to the soul it's a it's a food for the soul and as soul, we came here to live through this experience and to bring beautiful out of our experiences. And this creates an egregore at the collective level that is, that is the same quality. So maybe it's a little bit confusing what I'm saying, but uh, it's, it's quite difficult to put words on, on these things that are emanating from the invisible. But I guess you, you will catch it. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you again. And, um, and thank you for the nice message I'm receiving and, and all your, you know, appreciation. Appreciation is really, really very important in your daily life for tiny thing, just to have a glass of water to drink. And I saw, I wanted to tell you, I posted some days ago, like three days ago, in my story, uh, I saw this beautiful French documentary about water. And uh, it's, it's, it's fabulous. When you understand this process, uh, when you are in appreciation, uh, the water that you are made of is happy. And when you are in gratitude, the water you are made of is happy. And this is going to show, emanate from yourself. You're going to glow because all your cells, your particle of water are full of light and happy, full of happiness. Because you just simply appreciate what is offered to you in that life. And just, and with water... Every time I drink a glass of water, I'm so thankful to have that because without that, I could not be alive. So this is the first thing. When you drink your water, I put mine after I filtered outside in a glass container in the sun. And I have the feeling she's happy like me when I am sun bathing. And when I take it every day, I have my gallon of glass uh, you know, glass container of water. I am like enjoying this happy water. And it's like my body become more and more happy because I have this consciousness and I evaluate this, uh, this water. So this is very, very, very important. And, and the particle of water, all the particles that are connected together, but they different that be the form that be ice, um, moist, um, liquid, uh, um, like um, 
vapor, like, you know, steam, they connect together all around the world and inside each of us. It, it's a big, when we are aware about that uh, very deep, our life is changing a lot. Uh, we can feel how we are connected by this, by resonance from my water to the water of my neighbor, to that water, to the water I am, even the one that I am putting out of my body when I pee. You can be thankful about that, that your body did all this filtering thing and this goes back to nature. So uh, it's quite, and, uh, actually when you pee in nature, it's nice to pee on a rock because animals, creatures are gonna come and they can leak the mineral salt that is in your pee. So it's like a chain, instead of peeing on the ground, it's better to pee on a rock to have these salt minerals. So, you know, it's like a chain, it's, it's, it's fabulous when you are aware of that. You think everything is wonderful, everything is like, wow, it makes sense. So, voila. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much thank you very much and um, and I wish you a very good evening or very good day again I did this in English because it's uh, worldwide it's a language that is more spoken so uh, I apologize for the French people it's not easy I cannot speak both languages and if I do this live again in French, it will not be the same the same flow. It's not possible. Voila. Thank you very much. Bye bye.